Hello everyone and welcome to D2C Dialogues. Today we have Saurabh Munjal, co-founder and CEO at Lahori Zira. What is Lahori Zira? The tangy chatpata and masaledar fizzy drink has been a recognizable taste for over many years now. The passion to make desi the new cool gave rise to the idea of this very delicious Indian flavored bottled drink. Welcome to the show, Saurabh. Thank you, Dr. Hitesh. The first thing first, Lahori Zira. What is this all about? You know, and just tell us how did uh, a person who was well settled in Singapore and you know, had a couple of startups there uh, ventured into uh, non-alcoholic beverages uh, business. So how did this all start, Sora? It's actually quite a uh, interesting story, a very organic make uh, to the story I'll give you. Uh, so uh, after doing a small stint in Singapore, I had to come back because that's where the calling was. My I've been born and brought up in Chandigarh. My parents are here and therefore I had to come back. And uh, getting into uh, I sort of uh, had a, uh, I, I did my first entrepreneurial venture in India, which was actually in the hospitality space. Uh, again, of course, food and beverages, that's that's where all my uh, inclination has always been. Uh, it was actually in 2016 when uh, one my co-founder, who's also my cousin, uh, Nikhil, uh, he sort of made us try this. He's been blessed with amazing culinary skills and he made us try this beverage. At that point in time, he called it Jira. Uh, it was at his place and we would generally sit at his place because we were all of the same age. So it was me, uh, Nikhil and Saurabh Bhutna. The three, uh, we are three cousins uh, from our maternal side of the family. And we would are of the same age and we would just get together often and, and sit at Nikhil's place just because uh, Nikhil has uh, great culinary skills. So or kuch hota nahi tha, at least khane ko mil jata tha because uh, he's been blessed with good culinary skills. So therefore, uh, it was one of these days uh, he made us try this product and we absolutely loved it. All three of us knew at that point in time. That was like the Eureka moment. We knew at that point in time that this is something that we want to really uh, work on uh, and, and, and pursue this uh, commercially. And that's how the journey started in 2016, from planning to research to arranging funds and, and to finally getting the product out in the market in 2017. That's how it all started. And uh, I, I, I think the follow-up question is quite obvious as to why we named it Lori. Uh, honestly, there was no real, uh, no massive story behind it. There were two logics to it. So we wanted to come up with a brand name that could correlate with good food, good, good beverages. Uh, and uh, the only two options that we would come up with at that point in time was Amritsari or Lahori. These are the two places which are famous for food. So we sort of uh, realized that Amritsari was too long a name to sort of build a brand around. So we sort of stuck to Lahori. And also another logic to that is that uh, uh, so Lahori Namak is the key ingredient, is actually one of the only common ingredient in all our flavors. We've got a whole, whole portfolio of products which which has which consists of different flavors. The only common ingredient in all of them is the pink salt, which is the Lahori Namak. It's also okay. called the Lahori Namak. And therefore, we thought key it makes sense for uh, for the brand to be uh, known as Lahori. Before we go ahead, uh, Saurabh, can you tell what kind of products you have so that you know it will be easy for the audience also to understand and comment? Correct. So basically, uh, uh, Lahori Jira was just one flavor that we tried and we wanted to sort of start off with. Uh, what uh, During the that research is what we realized that uh, there was a white space in the market. And uh, to be honest with you, it's, it still exists as, as because no one actually is catering to that space of traditional Indian flavors, which are uh, which Indians are uh, more suited to. The, it's more suited to the which is which comes naturally to the Indian palate. No matter what part of the country you are from, but you must have uh, heard the name Nibu Pani, Shikanji, or common drinks of that sort. So that's where the whole inspiration came from. We wanted to cater to that white space. Uh, we all are actually all our products are actually influenced or inspired from the Indian kitchen or the uh, street food of India. That's where the inspiration came from, and that's what we sort of wanted to cater to. Uh, so that white space is what we're working in. Uh, we all our products are uh, 
made from natural ingredients. They're all traditional Indian flavors. Uh, we intend to sort of go uh, do be, become a pan India brand, and and we intend to sort of launch local flavors that Indians like. Uh, no matter what part of the country you're from, there are multiple flavors. India is actually a very diverse country, so you'll realize after every hundred kilometers, the language changes, the taste changes, the preferences changes. Therefore, we are going to come up with local flavors that people of India like. Sort of the whole market is dominated by many sugary drinks you know, sure. and sugary sodas. So how can you convince the customer that you know you are the best and the health? I, I won't get to the health part of it, but the best part of it. Or maybe so, how do yeah. you differentiate? Correct. So basically, as I said, uh, the product difference differentiation is very much there. As, as I said, there is nobody, no player in the beverage space in India who is actually catering to that uh, uh, ethnic Indian flavors, the, the flavors that are actually uh, evolved from uh, the kitchens of India. So there's no, so the product differentiation is clearly there. Having said that, uh, there is a healthy angle to all of this. Uh, there are a lot of beverages out there uh, in the market which are uh, sugary. And to be honest with you, our product is also sugary. Uh, it doesn't, uh, we, we never sort of uh, pitch ourselves as, as a brand that is trying to take care of a health angle. Having said that, one thing that we are absolutely uh, sure of and ha have we have clear focus on is that we use natural in ingredients in our products, which nobody else does, which ingredients that are in principally very healthy. Like, like cumin powder or or black salt or or, or multiple other uh, natural uh, products ingredients that we use in our product. We are the first product in the country which had launched a carbonated product which had floating floating ingredients in the product. You can literally see those ingredients and they are edible. So so the ingredients that we are using are natural and in principally healthy. But having said that, we never call ourselves to be a health product. We are a product which is an indulgence, and and there's no two ways about that. So Saurabh, uh, now that you got the name, you got uh, the uh, the product, sure. how did you go about marketing it as a next step? Because nobody knew what Lahori Zira is all about. Interesting question. I'm glad actually you picked it up because uh, I'd, I'd be happy to sort of share a fact uh, that up until 2022, uh, started starting from 2017, we uh, sort of grew year on year, uh, every year, uh, more than 50% each year. Uh, actually, uh, it was bootstrapped throughout and uh, there was substantial, enormous growth that we saw in our business. All of it with a net marketing spend of zero rupees over a period of uh, 2017 to 2022. We How did come? not have the... Yeah, what's, so the magic, have what's the magic? Share the magic. So we did not have the resources, honestly, not that we never thought it is not important to create that awareness, to build that awareness. We absolutely believe it's important. It's just that we were bootstrapped and we did not have the resources. All the resources that we were pulled in or all the money that we would make year on year would be just uh, put right back in, in trying to build uh, capacities because every year, whatever we would make would be sold out. We've always, in the past six years of our existence, we've uh, utilized our uh, production capabilities to more than 95% of our capability. So clearly showing that always building uh, capacities, production capabilities was always the first priority. So there was therefore no marketing spend whatsoever. The real king were two things. One is the product. Our product was the real hero. That is what did the real magic. What we actually believed and how we started was uh, doing literal retailing, the fundamental uh, definition of retailing. What that means is uh, putting, getting the product placed at the shelf, first convincing the distributor by just making him taste the product, and then thereafter, let the consumers sort of market it for us. The distributors did it because they had better margins from our product. The retailers did it because they loved the product. And that is how, so it was as organic as one can be, as one uh, a brand possibly can grow. I think this would be a case study in marketing where, you know, you have come from scratch and, and the numbers that, you know, you have. How many bottles uh, you uh, uh, produced? We started with 96,000 bottles a day capacity. 96,000 a day. And uh, as of today, uh, we have now a production capability of 50 lakh bottles every day. 50 lakh bottles every day? Yeah. So yeah. Here's, here's a brand who has not spent majorly on marketing 
and mm. from 96,000 bottles a day to 50 lakh bottles a day is the production capacity. And that Correct. gets sold, Saurabh, am I right? Correct. So uh, truth be told, the 50 lakh production capabilities just happened for us. Before that, there was uh, 20 lakh bottles, where, which was completely sold out throughout. Okay. So again, rephrasing it from 96,000 to 20 lakh bottles per day, which were completely sold out without investing majorly in marketing. Yeah, absolutely. That's a correct statement. Awesome, Saurabh. And you have just uh, told us the reason behind that the, the distributors loved it, the dealers and the retailers loved it, and absolutely. obviously the customer loved it. That's why it absolutely. went on repeating. That's so where the, the growth uh, happened, uh, the because of the love from the consumers at the end of the day. So the core for this is the product. If your product yeah. is right, I think uh, everything else flows naturally. With that, let's come to the supply chain since we're talking about bottles, etc. How did you manage? Because when you started, you just had an idea along with your cousin. But to setting up the manufacturing XYZ, so did, did you go for make or buy? And how did the whole supply chain happen? So, uh, uh, Dr. Hitesh, it's important to sort of uh, first understand the basics of, of uh, coming up with the product. And, and, and nowadays, it's become very popular to get it contract manufactured and just to build a brand. Uh, to be honest with you, if you're actually operating at the bottom of the pyramid, which means you're at the basic level of MRP, which means that you're, uh, you have to be very nimble in everything in the cost of manufacturing, in the cost of goods sold. Once you go into contract manufacturing and to be operating at the 10 rupee price segment, it's sort of impossible with the 40% indirect tax involved. It is impossible to operate at that level via contract manufacturing. And therefore, it was important. We had strategically taken a step that production is something that we'll have to do ourselves. We'll have to master the entire art. We have to be very nimble in our uh, costs uh, incurred. And therefore, that's the reason why the only uh, logics or the only unit economics would work out if we do get into production ourselves. So we set up our production uh, plant ourselves without. So here are three guys who are all, say, 27 years of age uh, with zero experience in terms of how to set up a, a beverage plant. Without any consultant, we did set it up uh, step by step, making some mistakes, learning from those mistakes, and eventually uh, uh, being uh, able to set up uh, facilities which are state of art as of today, which can easily be compared to the likes of the, the big boys in the industry. So uh, that's how the entire process started. But production is something that we sort of did in-house, and, and we continue to do so for the timing uh, until we are at a point where the brand is large enough uh, where uh, the needed uh, need to grow for uh, for its presence to be in the entire country and not just a certain uh, geography. With this supply chain now ready, today where all is Lahori Zira available across sure. on channels sure. as well as places. Sure. Happy to share that. Uh, so first of all, what needs to be sort of uh, understood is beverage is largely a offline sale business. Yes. So you generally don't go online to order a small drink, a bottle of drink. It just doesn't make sense, right? Right. So if you let's just say if you were to uh, buy a ten rupee product online, the cost of buying online is going to be way higher. So it doesn't make sense, right? But having said that, the online community or or uh, say e-commerce is is really growing at a rapid pace, and therefore it can't be ignored. So large, we are largely a GT led brand. Uh, uh, I mean we've covered the entire space. First, we started in Punjab itself and then the neighboring uh, states. So uh, it's also pertinent to mention at this point in time is uh, that we always work on the three of us were on the same page when it came to building this brand. We did not want to set up a business that would just produce a commodity and sell it. It was never about this. The Always the logic was to build a brand out of this product. We wanted to build a brand, you know, a brand that is has a personality of its own. That's what we wanted to sort of uh, build. And therefore, we were very conscious of launching our product in different markets. It wasn't for the lack of options. I'll be very honest with you, sir. We've all these five years, we've had, uh, uh, we have about 50 to 100 inquiries on an everyday basis from across the country and outside India as well. Uh, just inquiries about uh, getting our distribution. But we always were conscious of first going deep before going wide. So if you launch a product, say, in Punjab and you get an inquiry from Haryana, uh, but we said, sir, 
at this point time no but we'll save your contacts at, at the right time we'll come in touch with you so what i'm trying to say is you launch a product in a certain market and then you disappear that's not very brand like so we were conscious that whenever we launch we first penetrate the market through a substantial uh, possibility and after that once we've been able to achieve that then go on to the next state so we started with one state punjab and eventually uh, last year we did uh, our sales in nine nine states and i'm very happy to tell you that today we are available in 15 states we've got our distribution network in 15 states via uh, a distribution strength of 900 uh, or distributors 900 or distributors started mm. with Punjab as the only state for distribution yes. went down yes. to nine states and today uh, Lahore is states. available in 15 states and 900 odd uh, distributors are contributing to that uh, distribution. Correct. So, you know, uh, sort of uh, another question that comes in mind is all these things happen, but you can't do this without money. Of course. And, you know, how has been your, you know, the funding part, the funding journey? You know, because you you must have invested, all three of you must have invested from your own pocket to start with. But you you definitely require funding to come at this scale of 15 states and 900 distributors, etc. Absolutely. So absolutely. can you take You're us through that on. part? Sure. Absolutely. You're spot on. Uh, uh, you cannot do, you can't run a business. You can't scale a business without funds. Uh, there is no two ways about it. Truth be told, at the age of 27 years old uh, age, you don't really have a lot in your pocket. So we literally pulled in funds asking loans from our parents and, and fa uh, family and friends. That's how it started. We were bootstrapped until 2021 uh, before uh, World Invest came into picture, which is a very mature, very sorted uh, uh, PE uh, uh, from Belgium who sort of uh, uh, came into, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a relationship with us that's that's when the funding came in before that it was all bootstrapped so year on year whatever accruals we made we never withdrew anything instead we just kept putting it uh, back in the business that's how the journey was and another thing that's important to sort of uh, point out is the beverage space generally products are sold on credit whereas we as a brand were conscious of as I said, we wanted to build a brand and therefore no matter what, uh, ever since 2017 to till date, we've never sold a single product on credit. Wow. So always it's been on advanced basis. So therefore, uh, a lot of working capital at least was funded by, by, by our customers themselves. So this is again a case study and an example because again, a, maybe, you know, anybody must have done, but not known. But yeah. such a big business and you don't give credit, you know, to your yes. trade is yes. something which is unheard of. Yes. Yes. Also, another point that I'd like to mention, I probably missed out on that on your previous question as to where all uh, we are selling via, what all channels are we selling uh, via. Uh, obviously, GT is the substantial bit of it, but we are available on modern trade, all modern trade stores uh, from uh, the biggest guys to the likes of DMAS to Reliance Retails. Uh, to uh, all hyper local stores, the concept of hyper local is something which is really uh, growing and, and 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 growing at a very rapid pace. We're available at all uh, decent scaled uh, hyper local stores. We're available uh, on all all uh, e-commerce websites as well. Uh, so basically, we are only present, and that's the whole idea. And to be honest with you, as we speak, very shortly we'll be selling via our own website. So literally D two C. Will you be able to manage the cost of selling a single bottle? So will, will that be a minimum order quantity or how, yes. how will you go about selling yes. online? Yes, there will be an MOQ. Uh, honestly, uh, another revelation in our business that uh, sort of happened on its own, uh, we are a pr pr uh, indulgence product. Having said that, most about 50% of our sales, that number may be plus minus, but about 50% of our sales is actually uh, products consumed after they're bought in uh, cases in a box of 24 and they, they, the, the consumer buys the entire box, takes it to their home and then consumes it over a period of time. So it's like a planned purchase and not just an indulgence where you're thirsty and you want to quench your thirst and you buy a 10 rupee bottle. So there are a lot of people out there, there are a lot of consumers out there who love the product enough to pick up an entire case, take it back home and consume it over a period of time. So, sort of in this, I want to ask you, who is your biggest competitor or the nearest competitor? 
so honestly as i said we are uh, still uh, uh, operating in this white space where nobody is really looking at traditional flavors uh, our category of product is something that nobody is really been able to copy or or come up with having said that at the end of the day the consumer will always have the option of buying a cola versus a uh, buying a traditional flavor so the obvious the obvious competition is the uh, likes of coke pepsi parle agro these three big boys who are sort of dominating the industry are are the closest competitors having said that there is substantial product differentiation to sort of stand out from their uh, portfolio of products now this is where the question is and the strategy comes in you have rightly said that the colas are the the cola companies are my competitor what about the nimbu panis and the Uh, tea coffees of the world as well narel pani is nimbu absolutely, pani is absolutely absolutely yeah, you are absolutely right they are of this uh, compet- they're not direct competition but indirectly of course any consumer will have to decide whether he wants a cold or a hot beverage that obviously becomes a competition uh, so for that matter anybody or all indulge, uh, indirectly all indulgence products uh, are actually competition anything uh, that a that a, uh, a decision has to be made for that person on the go whether to buy what is it that he wants to buy in that 10 rupee with that 10 rupee note all the products available in a small kiryana store are actually my competition not so, directly but indirectly i'm fighting for that 10 rupee note that the consumer spends absolutely now with this there is a strategic question that i am going to ask will you venture into a direct competition with the pepsi colas and the coca colas of the world so i am di- directly definitely in competition with them there are no two there's no uh, two ways about it uh, but uh, if you are asking me if i'm ever going to start making cola the actual answer at this point in time the first answer that comes to my mind is a no but in business you can never say never wow so that it's says a lot yeah it is strategic we have to be open to the opportunity at some point in time we grow as a brand and and uh, and uh, our entire portfolio is built around that and and at some point in time i feel that that's i want to compete with the likes of coke and pepsi at their level as well why not so why at this not? point in time at this point in time i am very focused uh, as a brand to build it around this uh, this niche category for the masses having said that i'm not going to write it off well said saurabh now where will the growth come from are you going to diversify to international markets that is one that is geographical diversification or the growth is going to come by expansion of the product portfolio so a uh, a good question uh, the honest answer is that it's time to go both deep and wide in terms of geographical look, uh, you know expansion uh, international markets are attract they sound attractive but the honest fact is uh, that the entire world is looking out for india as becoming a consumer economy and there are enough consumers for my product 140 crore of them are all technically my tg so there is enough people to sort of cater to in india if i am able to sort of cater to this large an audience i don't really need a, a, an export option having said that there is at some point time i will venture into uh, sales outside india as well so this geographical expansion definitely and also the product basket expansion is another thing that we are simultaneously working on uh, at this point time we are largely a carbonated beverage in the carbonated beverage segment but we are working very fast and very hard towards building an entire portfolio of products in the non carbonated space which is in itself is a large category and therefore we as a brand intend to be an option for the entire pyramid top to bottom so there's there are two ends of the pyramid one is uh, say the customer the other is the distribution so no matter where you are what part of the country you are from sorry uh, hear me so no matter what part of the country you are from as long as you are somebody who's looking out to buy a beverage you will find lahori as an option that's the entire aim since you use the let's just say if you're traveling on an airlines let's just say you are uh, a, a, a zomato delivery guy on the go let's just say you are a businessman sitting in a corporate office let's just say you are a consumer going in a shop of jewelry shop to buy a certain jewelry if somebody wants to consume a beverage lahori will be an option and that's the entire aim so since we are talking about growth and you use the word buy okay yes. 
I want to ask you another strategic question related to growth. Are you ready to buy out, uh, you know, uh, from a uh, inorganic growth perspective, or you are ready to be bought? I mean, that's a separate thing. But currently, what what Dr. is the Ipesh, situation? Uh, we are businessmen at the end of the day. Our decision making is completely strategic and uh, in the given circumstances, right? At this point in time, we are not actively looking to either sell out or to buy. But definitely, most definitely, there is a very high probability that I might come across a, a local brand which is doing very well and also suits our uh, sensibilities as a brand. And if it, that happens and at the right price, why not? I would definitely buy out somebody. And I, given an opportunity, given the scale, given the valuation, if that is correct, and if there is a strategic opportunity, then we'll be open for that as well. I cannot say that I will do this or I is not how a business is. We have to be... Yeah, Saurabh, you were telling something. Last, last line... So we have to be we have to be open. We have to be smart about making the right calls in the with the right in the right set of circumstances, making the right decisions. There is no so the 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 uh, the word no does not exist in a dictionary for of a businessman. That's at least what I believe. You well cannot said. say no. Either buy somebody or get bought. You know, I mean, yeah. everything is open. It's circumstantial and time to time. Absolutely, absolutely. Got it. With this, sort of uh, Munjal, we come to the rapid fire round. And I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and you know, you may just answer it as quickly as you can. Favorite drink on the Lahori sure. Zira menu? Nimbu. I, my personal favorite is Lahori Nimbu. Absolutely love it. Any interesting childhood memories with desi drinks? Yes, of course. Uh, as a kid, I, I would love the banta, but my parents would keep telling me ki, uh, Bita wo bahut hygienic and healthy mat peena, but I would still chori chori pee leta tha. Very nice. All of us did that. Dream travel destination inspired by your brand. Inspired by my brand. Uh, <laughs> interesting one. Uh, so I, I'd probably choose a, a state in, in India itself. And I think uh, UP is a beautiful state, both from the perspective of sales for my, my brand and also from the perspective of tourism. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful state with a huge amount of population, with crazy amount of, uh, you know, uh, uh, range from uh, languages to taste to monuments to everything. It is a great, great state. Sort of Very most about heartwarming customer feedback you have received on your product. Uh, honestly, I give you an incident which is going to uh, tell us, tell a lot about uh, what the brand is all about. So there was this day when I'd actually gone to meet uh, one of the ministers in Punjab uh, with a certain set of delegates. And uh, over there we went and then uh, uh, that uh, minister, honorable minister sort of said, because it's a hot day why don't you all consume something very interesting that i've just come across and he calls a guy and the guy comes with lahori jira and wow. everybody with me started started smiling and laughing because uh, the honorable minister didn't realize that i actually am the co-founder for that brand and it was a great great moment and he congratulated me and it was a great feeling and on the same day uh that's actually the best part of the story uh, on the same day when i was coming back uh, in the car, I was sitting and I was just very happy in that, uh, enjoying that moment. I saw somebody like a small beggar on the traffic signal, just consuming that bottle of Lahori Vira. So, wow. so that really tells the, how uh, my TG is so varied and that's the level that, uh, that I'm operating at. So th that was a great, great experience. That moment was special. One celebrity you would like to see endorse Lahori Zira. Ah, nice. Interesting. Uh, I think at this point in time, the popular opinion is Ranveer Singh. So I guess Ranveer Singh, but uh, but the likes of Coke and Pepsi don't leave such celebrities. What, describe the brand Lahori Zira in three words. Lahori Zira, uh, so Chatpata, Desi, and Quality. Chatpata, Desi, and Quality. Yeah. Awesome. Last question, uh, Saurabh Munjal. Uh, where do you see Lahori Zira five years down the line in numbers? Five years. So uh, three years down the line, we uh, intend to be available uh, as a brand, a pan, become a pan India brand. Uh, five years, well, hundred. I'm very sure less than five years, we will reach the one thousand crore mark. Sort of one interest, interesting, you know, observation that I have done is uh, Lahori Zira 
doesn't have a brand ambassador right. it is not that you cannot afford you have got a funding around approximately 22 million plus but still you don't have a brand ambassador what is the reason behind this sir a uh, great observation dr hitesh uh, 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 to be honest with you it's not just that i've got 22 million of funding we've always been a brand since ever since our inception that we've always been profitable we've always been cognizant of our unit economics so therefore funding has never been an issue we could have engaged a brand ambassador earlier we could have engaged it now and uh, again i'm not going to say never very soon maybe we'll have a brand ambassador on board the whole point as a businessman what you need to strike your balances on are the fact that you have to time everything is right there is a right time frame or a range where you need to make certain decisions we did not want it to create a opportunity we believe where the brand ambassador is taken on board this this increases our demand for the product but we're not able to uh, cater to that demand uh, we, if that demand is not converted into a sale this actually decreases the value of your brand the brand equity goes down because of that therefore we that's the reason why we do not have a brand ambassador at, at this point in time but maybe before our next conversation conversation we we might have so funds was never an issue it was always setting the priority right as to how should you go about doing your business first get your products on the shelves first ensure that the distribution is right once you've cracked that that is when you sort of go and engage a brand ambassador to get that conversion rate higher so that, that's that's the reason why we don't have it yet excellent insights sort of first get your product right your distribution right and then get a brand ambassador yes yes because you'll be able to cater to the demand yeah a lot of a lot of these guys actually make the mistake of getting the brand ambassador early they intend to do it to get the distribution which is actually the wrong way of going about it so here is saurabh munjal who wants lahori zira to be a pan india brand in less than 5 years and Uh, become a thousand crore brand in five years time. We wish uh, Saurabh Munjal all the very best, and thank you very much, Saurabh, for being a part of D two C dialogues and sharing your insights today with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor Hitesh. It was a lovely conversation. It was a nice and short conversation. Very crisp. Very happy to be here. Thank you.